Long ago and far away, in enchanted lands across the seas, lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. Rare Rabbit and the Tar Baby. Once upon a time, there lived a certain Br'er Fox. This crafty old fox loved to play tricks on all his fellow animals, but Br'er Rabbit was the one he really wanted to catch out. When Br'er Fox wore a wicked smile on his face and a silk neckerchief around his neck, you just knew he was up to no good. One day, when his smile stretched from ear to ear and his neckerchief was tied in the neatest of knots, he took a mighty lump of tar. With his own paws, he made it into the shape of a baby. Then he dressed Tar Baby up and sat him right in the middle of the path. Br'er Fox was rather proud of his new creation. My, my, you do look cute, he told him. Then he hid behind the bushes and waited for Br'er Rabbit. And as he was waiting, a jolly little song came into his head. Dum de dum de dum, come Br'er Rabbit, come. Put your paws this way, as you do each day. Aha, here comes the fool, and doesn't he look cool? Hoppity hoppity hop, stop Br'er Rabbit, stop. <laughs> Just as Br'er Fox expected, Br'er Rabbit stopped when he saw the little baby sitting on the path. Mama, you're the cutest little fella I've ever seen, cried Br'er Rabbit. Br'er Fox sniggered, but kept well hidden. Then Br'er Rabbit came right up close to that little tar baby. Good morning, he said. Mr. Sun's in a fine mood today, isn't he? <laughs> Tar Baby said nothing. Br'er Fox kept out of sight. You deaf or something? Said Br'er Rabbit. Tar Baby didn't say a word. ka chee chee If you don't talk to Uncle Rabbit here, I'm gonna tickle you. Said Br'er Rabbit. Still, Tar Baby kept quiet. <laughs> Br'er Fox couldn't stop chuckling behind the tree, but he didn't show his face. Br'er Rabbit started to lose his patience. I'm gonna teach you some manners if it's the last thing I do, he said. If you don't take that hat off your head right now and say, how do you do, I'm gonna do it for you. Tar Baby said nothing. Br'er Rabbit kept talking and Tar Baby kept quiet. He leant over and touched Tar Baby's hair. His paw was stuck fast. He tried to pull his paw away with his other paw, but pull as he might, this just wouldn't budge either. He pulled in all directions, but wherever Br'er Rabbit went, Tar Baby went with him. Let me go! Just let go of me! Said Br'er Rabbit, who twisted and turned, wriggled and wiggled as he tried to shake Tar Baby off. <laughs> let me go! <laughs> Poor old Br'er Rabbit! He tugged and he pulled, he pulled and he tugged. With one mighty heave, he tried to yank himself away from Tar Baby, but it was no good. You good for nothing? <laughs> let me go or I'll kick you. And let me tell you, I can kick harder than any donkey. He cried. So Br'er Rabbit gave him a mighty kick with one foot. Now that was stuck. He kicked with his other foot and that one stuck too. You with my head, said Br'er Rabbit. And I warn you, my head's harder than a rock. Tar Baby said nothing, so he butted him hard. <laughs> now Br'er Rabbit's head was stuck fast. Ow, ow, what at 
at last, Br'er Fox appeared from his hiding place. <laughs> How do you do, Br'er Rabbit? I see you've got yourself into a rather sticky situation. <laughs> he laughed. Well, I've got you good and proper this time. <laughs> After Br'er Fox had finished rolling around on the floor with laughter, he loped off, leaving Br'er Rabbit to get out of the sticky situation himself. It took Br'er Rabbit a whole day to clean all the tar off, and by the time he'd finished, he was fuming with anger. I'll get even with that Br'er Fox if it's the last thing I do, he muttered. A week later, he went to visit Mrs. Meadows and her daughters. Every week, he went to their house to catch up with the local gossip. Good day, ladies, he said as he kissed their hands and presented them with a bunch of flowers. He certainly knew how to charm Mrs. Meadows and her girls. <laughs> Good day, Br'er Rabbit, said Mrs. Meadows. I hear you were a little stuck up the other day. So, Br'er Fox has been in these parts lately, has he? Said Br'er Rabbit, gritting his teeth. Yes, yeah, sir, and it sure did cheer us up when we heard that story. Said Mrs. Meadows. It's the funniest story we've heard in a long time. Br'er Rabbit smiled politely and smoothed out his whiskers with his paws. Let's retire to the drawing room, he said. So he took a lady on each arm and led them into the drawing room. Oh yes, Br'er Rabbit knew exactly how to charm those ladies. He sat himself on a chair in the middle of the room, as cool as a cucumber, waving his paws about and telling wonderful tales while the ladies admired his good looks. And just before he left, he said, Did you know, ladies, Br'er Fox was my daddy's riding horse for 30 years or more? Why, well, you don't say. <laughs> then he bid the ladies good day and went on his way. The next day, Br'er Fox called on Mrs. Meadows and her girls. He'd hardly got all his paws through the door before all the ladies were gossiping to him. They were all so excited that they all tried to speak at once. <laughs> Mrs. Meadows ruled the roost at the house, though, and she told all her girls to hush while she told the story. Yesterday, Br'er Rabbit came a-calling on us. He told us you were his daddy's riding horse for 30 years or more. <laughs> Br'er Fox bit his tongue. I'll make Br'er Rabbit chew up his words and spit them right out again in front of them all, he thought. And then he made his way to Br'er Rabbit's house. It's time to turn over to side two.